Hello, my name is Robert Stern and I'm with the Washington DC law firm of Stern, Kessler, Goldstein and Fox. Today I would like to address the very critical issue of how will the new America Invents Act encourage or discourage capital raises for critical startups and emerging companies in the United States of America. Now, there are arguments that it will encourage capital raising, and there are arguments that the new AIA will not. But why is this so important? Why is this so important? Well, it's important because historically, it was startups and emerging companies that have produced a disproportionate number of the technological breakthroughs, the transformative technologies, the disruptive technologies that have occurred over the last 50 years. And by doing so, they have totally changed the technological landscape of who are the dominant players, and in the process created a huge number of high-tech jobs in this country. So the issue of capital raising under the new AIA is paramount to industrial competitiveness, the creation of new jobs, and the introduction of new technologies into the U.S. industrial base. So what are the arguments that can be advanced? That the new America Invents Act, which was passed in September of 2011 and is now coming on, on stream in many respects, that because it, it's a very complicated law, what are the arguments that this new AIA, as it's called, will encourage capital raises for these startups and emerging companies? The first argument is that the AIA reduces fees for many of these smaller entities, particularly what they call micro-entities, startups, by reducing the fees at the United States Patent and Trademark Office for patent applications and for some of the new contested proceedings uh, and other activities that occur. And in addition, there's the continuation of a very fast-track process for obtaining patents where an applicant can oftentimes obtain a patent in less than one year, the so-called track one process. And this track one process, it is argued, will be used more and more by these startups to get instant patent portfolios that they can use to show to potential investors, joint venturers, and others that they can use to build their business. Another argument that the new AIA is going to have a major positive impact is the reduction in the number of appeals of pending patent applications. Currently, there are 2,700 patent, 27,000, excuse me, patent applications pending at the United States Patent Trial and Appeal Board at the USPTO. This amounts to years and years of cases backlogged on appeal. They have recently hired at the PTO a large number of new judges called administrative patent judges to deal with this backlog. And promises have been made that this backlog under the new AIA will be substantially reduced in the next several years. In addition, the AIA and other activities have produced a large number of hiring of new examiners in the USPTO. And the creation of four new satellite offices for the PTO, Detroit, Silicon Valley, uh, Dallas, and Denver. The, the Detroit office is the furthest along in terms of its opening. Silicon Valley is operational, as well as Dallas and Denver. And what we're going to be seeing is there will be five patent offices, including the mother ship in Alexandria, Virginia, in full operation in the next several years. And this is a byproduct of the AIA. Director Kapos, who recently retired from the PTO, but did an outstanding job during his tenure, encouraged interviews with examiners in pat pending patent applications. This, these are actual meetings that occur between the attorney for the patent applicant and the examiner on the case to have a dialogue about the outstanding issues relating to a pending patent application. My experience and those of others in my firm is that this interview process is instrumental for obtaining strong patents in, an, in a timely and cost-effective way. And all indications are that Acting Director Terry Ray will continue this push towards encouraging these interviews. So we have a lot of arguments and 
theories that have been advanced on why the new AIA is going to encourage capital raising. But let's look at the negatives because there are also a lot of discussion about what the negatives are. The first negative is that we have moved from a first inventor system that the United States has used since the beginning of the Republic to this new first inventor to file regime, which puts a premium on well-heeled uh, entities who are able to file patent applications very early on in the R&D process, unlike a startup or an emerging company that oftentimes has to wait in the process before they are ready to file their patent application due to uh, constraints both in their budgets and in their personnel. So the larger, better healed uh, competitors, it is argued, will have a distinct advantage under this new first to in inventor to file system. And I would urge all startups and emerging companies to understand this and take appropriate action to overcome this disadvantage. In addition, as I described earlier, there is a backlog, a significant backlog in the prosecution of regular patent applications at the United States Patent and Trademark Office. And oftentimes it takes five to seven years under normal procedures, unlike track one that I talked about earlier, to get your patent application out. And there's also lower allowance rates that are occurring at the PTO in these patent applications. And there's also uncertainty about the critical issue of non-obviousness. In other words, whether the invention is sufficiently different from the prior technology to warrant patent protection. And all of this is making it more risky and uncertain as to whether you will obtain patent protection of significance, particularly in predictable arts. There's also the creation of these new contested proceedings, the so-called uh, inter-party review and contested business method reviews that exist under the new system that can be used to challenge the very portfolio that the startup and emerging company has created and essentially bleed the company to death by these new contested proceedings. There is also hostility in many quarters of the U.S. business community towards patents as of late because of arguments advanced by special interest groups that the patent system is broken, that it's, it's hostile to small companies, which in my experience is not the case, and that it is needs and requires extensive overhauls, of which the AIA is just the beginning. So there needs to be more education in the capital markets about this new patent landscape. Companies that are starting to raise capital need to understand their business model. They need to understand how their business model deals with this new patent landscape and take a proactive approach in dealing with their investors, joint venturers, and other partners as they build their business. They should not make intellectual property a small part of their pitch. They should make it a central point of their pitch. And by understanding this new landscape better, they can make a more compelling story, raise more money, and get less dilution in the process. Thank you very much.